السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم We are in Surah Yunus in the beginning of Surah Yunus, this blessed surah that was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca, establishing the foundations and the pillars of Al-Iman, especially the belief in the Qadr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the destiny of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, that when a person believes in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala with His names and attributes, he has to, by necessity, to believe in the Qadr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the Creator of all things. He's the most powerful. He's the all-knower. He's the most wise, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's the most mercy. He's the most merciful. So therefore, anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed is by the wisdom of Allah, by the power of Allah, by the knowledge of Allah. So the believers, they always, their hearts are content. And they have that state of tranquility, being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the ones that truly benefit from the signs of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created many signs around us. We are ourselves a great sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person just look at the creation of Allah, we won't have any time in our life but to reflect and to humble ourselves to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He calls us to reflect upon the signs of Allah, the creation of Allah. Not to look at it like animals when they look at the creation of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us intellectual abilities. He gave us reason for, uh, for us to look deeper into the matter. That when we see the amazing creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should return back to ourselves with humbleness, to submit ourselves to the creator of the heavens and the earth. Not to be arrogant, not to be stubborn, but rather to follow the truth and to know that these signs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it for a reason. And that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that's why it's always repeated. The signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are of two types. The physical signs of Allah, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we will see, is discussed in these verses that we'll talk about inshallah ta'ala. And the religious signs, the wahi, the revelation from Allah. The signs from Allah for us to reflect upon, for us to have the iman, the faith, and the righteous good deeds, and to be steadfast on the deen of Allah. We'll go through inshallah ta'ala three verses in Surah Yunus, from verse number four to number six. In Surah Yunus, that talks about the greatness of Allah, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and all that is leading us from one verse to the other to establish al-Iman, to establish the faith, and to be able to sustain that Iman and this faith, to implement it in our life with the good deeds and to stay away from what is evil and bad deeds. We'll start with inshallah ta'ala verse number four in Surah Yunus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِلَيْهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ جَمِيعًا وعد الله حقا إنه يبدأ الخلق ثم يعيده ليجزي الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات بالقسط والذين كفروا لهم شراب من حميم وعذاب أليم بما كانوا يكفرون which means to him is your return all together it is the promise of Allah which is truth indeed he begins the process of creation and then repeats it that he may reward those who have believed and done righteous deeds in justice, but those who disbelieved will have a drink of scalding water and a painful punishment for what they used to deny. This verse is based on what's mentioned before. Last episode, we talked about the first three verses in the surah. And for someone to understand the Quran, we have to look into the verses in the context of it. And to look at the verses before and the verses after, and what the verses are leading to. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after establishing the fact that He is the Lord of all that exists, that He is the creator of the heavens and the earth, 
that he's above his throne, that he has the majesty, he's the greatness. And he's the one that runs and arranges the affairs for the human beings. No one is to intercede except by the permission of Allah. And this is your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, therefore worship him. And do not be in forgetfulness, but rather be in state of remembrance. Then after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, why we should be in state of remembrance? Why we should not be forgetful and ignorant? Because, إِلَيْهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ جَمِيعًا To him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, مَرْجِعُكُمْ You return, جَمِيعًا, all of you. Nobody will escape the return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that when we say, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ To Allah we belong and to Allah we shall return. Everybody shall return to Allah. So after establishing the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and he's the one that ought to be worshipped, then remember that you all will return to Allah. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we came, he created all of us, and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we shall return. This is physically is going to happen after we depart from this earth, after death. Everybody physically will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is establishing the belief in the hereafter. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of all that exists and He's the creator of the heavens and the earth, then the hereafter is something that is not a difficult matter. The one that created us in the beginning, He's the one that is able to resurrect us. Resurrecting, creating something after it's already been created, it's much easier than creating something from nothing. And we are created from nothing. The one that created us from nothing, He's the one that is going to create us again, resurrect us in the Day of Judgment. Everybody shall return to Allah. As we'll talk about inshallah ta'ala at the end, what's the significance of that? Believe in the hereafter changes the entire life of a human being. Makes a person righteous, understand the warnings and the glad tidings, living in this earth physically, but our hearts are attached to the hereafter because that's what's coming ahead. And also to make all of our affairs return all matters to Allah. Any speech, actions, belief, Make sure that you know that this is something that we need to follow the orders of Allah. Don't leave it for your own selves. And if we do not know, then we should ask the people of knowledge. Because we should refer all of our affairs and all of our matters to the deed of Allah. So, إِلَيْهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ جَمِيعًا To Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the significance of that starting first. To Him, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, everybody shall return. مَرْجِعُكُمْ جَمِيعًا Nobody is going to escape. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ where you think you're going. You're not going nowhere. You're returning to Allah. Meaning you cannot choose for yourself where to go. The choice of the human beings is not there for them to choose whether to return to Allah or to return to someone else or not to return. They are in state of submission to Allah when they are born, when they die. And everybody shall return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِلَيْهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ جَمِيعًا As we said, when we're reading the Qur'an, when we're listening to the Qur'an, the Qur'an is revealed for it to enter our hearts. We need to make sure that we have our hearts uh, you know, um, receiving these verses. And not just our ears, but we need to make sure that it enters inside because the effect of it, to purify our hearts and to make us set fast in the deen of Allah. So, إِلَيْهِ to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مَرْجِعُكُمْ جَمِيعًا All of you shall return to Allah, the belief in the hereafter. Then right after that, وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقًّا The promise of Allah. Wa'da is the promise. The promise of Allah Haqqa, in reality, this is in truth. The promise of Allah, who's the one that is promising? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. When human beings, they do not fulfill their promise, it's because they're deficient. They have weaknesses. They're liars, they're evil people, or they might be truthful. Sometimes a person give a promise, but he's not able to fulfill the promise. He was truthful when he was given it. But then when it, you know, time passes, he falls sick, for example. A, a father promised his children to take them to the zoo, for example, on a particular day. But then he died before that, or he fell sick before that, or something happened, right? Because he's a human being, he's deficient, he's limited. But when we talk about the creator of the heavens and the earth, then his promise is the truth. And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promise? Some of it is mentioned in this verse, and it's the entire Qur'an. Promised the believers, what? And promised the disbelievers, what? What did he promise the hypocrites? For a person, the reciter of the Qur'an, to choose which category of people that he want to be among. And the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there waiting for the people. 
And as mentioned before, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the glad tidings for the believers that they have qadama siddiqin inda rabbihim, that they have already sent with their good deeds what is waiting for them, the honor and the high level from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these people with the Lord. So wa'adallahi haqqa, this is what brings or keeps the hearts of the believers steadfast on the truth. Be patient, this life is limited. Every day we hear news about people dying. Some people they die when they're young and some people they die when they're very old. You ask the person that is 90 years old, 100 years old and he's dead or he died or he's dying, he would see that this life was just like a blink of an eye, like as if it's one hour because it passed. And this is the fact of anything that passes. And for the people of wisdom and those who have intellect, they understand that statement very well and they know that Kulli atin qareeb, anything that is coming is near, is not far. Death is not far, even if it's after 100 years from now. It's near because it's coming. And the return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not far. It's something that is very near because it's going to happen. And this is what the Prophet والسلام, he mentioned this so that it's a concept that we always have the perception of it. The Jannah is nearer to you than your shoe. And the same thing for the Hellfire. The matter is very near. And that's why we should act accordingly. We should not act on the face of earth as if we are going to live on the face of earth forever. But rather to take the means and to do the actions that is going to be the means for us to the everlasting life. Wa'adallahi the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. So then therefore be patient with the orders of Allah. Then it says, إِنَّهُ يَبْدَأُ الْخَلْقَ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُ إِنَّهُ indeed he is subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَبْدَأُ الْخَلْقَ he initiates his creation. He begins the creation, the process of creation. He's the one that initiated and be began that by the creation of Adam alayhi salam. He's the first of all of the human beings. And he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that begins the process of the creation every time a child is conceived. The creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that we witness every day in our life with millions of people. And the same thing with taking away life. So for those who are heedless about this, then they should not blame anyone but their own selves. And we see that how it's happening. A person is, you know, did not exist on the face of earth, you know, years back. He was nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created him from nothing. That human being did not create himself. His parents did not create him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them means. Who's the one that created everything? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a reality. It's a matter of belief. Innahu. He initiates the creation, the process of it, the continuity of the creation. Then he will return it back. Since he's the one that creates everything, and you see the amazing creation of Allah, and that's one of the signs of Allah that people should look into it with their own hearts and their eyes and so on. They would say, or they would say uh, clearly that this since this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the one that also would return them. We get to know that from the revelation from Allah. And it's not something impossible. It's not something that is difficult since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one that initiated this creation. Thumma yu'idu, then he would return them back. For what reason? He's the most wise. Why would he return them back after this life? He said subhanahu wa ta'ala, لِيَجِزِيَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ بالقسط. For the two categories of people to be treated with the justice of Allah and the mercy of Allah, so that he subhanahu wa ta'ala may reward those who have believed and done righteous deeds and justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward them with justice. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the believers by his mercy. Because justice is to just get exactly what you, uh, what you deserve. And when it comes to what we deserve, what a human being deserve, human beings they commit sins. The believers they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Justice in that sense meaning when it comes to the promise of Allah, as the ulama they say. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised the believers that if they believe and do righteous good deeds and they die in that state, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward them Jannah. So the justice of Allah says that they would be rewarded what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised them. Not necessarily what they deserve as if they are dictating what to be upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's something that Allah bestowed upon them. That's by the mercy of Allah. And they receive all of that by the mercy of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. 
And this is the first category of people, the believers. Those who believe, وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they do righteous, good deeds. And then the other category mentioned in the verse, what happens to them, the disbelievers? This we'll talk about, inshallah ta'ala, after the break. So stay with us, inshallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah Muhammadur Rasulullah Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam Rasulullah. We'll come back and still with verse number four in Surah uh, Yunus and the two categories of people, the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward them by His justice subhanahu wa ta'ala that He promised them as we see the promise of Allah to the believers in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet So the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth and when they took the means to uh, fulfill that promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would, will treat them with His justice in that sense that they would uh, be rewarded the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is not comparable to the actions, it's by the mercy of Allah. Then when it comes to the other group, those who turned away from the signs of Allah, willingly, the truth has been presented to them, and they turned away and they disbelieved. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَهُمْ شَرَابٌ مِّنْ حَمِيمٌ وَعَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْفُرُونَ That but for those who disbelieved will have a drink of scalding water and a painful punishment for what they used to deny. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. Some verses of the Quran talks about more details and more specific torture and punishment in the hereafter for the disbelievers. And this is by the justice of Allah. He warned them. And if they don't take heed and if they don't take the matter serious in this life, then they should not blame anyone but their own selves. And they would receive what they've mentioned, what's mentioned here because of their actions. The ayah says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا But those who disbelieved, so they did the act of disbelief. And that's why it does not mention the names of the people. It talks about their characteristics, which is they disbelieve. The truth has been presented to them, which already talks to their pure nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them with. And they chose to be disbelievers and to deny the truth. So what happens to them? وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَهُمْ شَرَابٌ مِّنْ حَمِيمٌ They have a drink from Hamim. The Hamim is the boiling water, scalding water. Something that when it comes close to their faces, their faces would melt because of the, the heat of it. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His mercy, nobody can comprehend. And the rewards is something that nobody can ever imagine. And also the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very severe because He's the one that is able to do all things. وَعَذَابٌ alim, And a painful torment. Because of what? بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْفُرُونَ Because of what they used to disbelieve. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again is the most just. This is the qadr of Allah. This is the decree of Allah upon them. That nobody is to question the wisdom of Allah. For some people when they say, why all of this? That's by the wisdom of Allah. And instead of asking about the wisdom of Allah, they should ask themselves first, have the warning came or not? Because they don't act as, when, as we mentioned this before. And this is something that we should always remember, that the disbelievers, they live their life, they understand very well how to be warned. So they have been warned. And if they don't take the warning serious because they are turning away from it, because they are arrogantly disbelieving in the truth, it's not about, again, as we said before, the, the faith is not a, uh, you know, something difficult that people need to be convinced or not convinced. Guidance is in the hands of Allah. But religions, false religions, when they made it very difficult for people to see the truth because it's a very difficult thing, a concept for them to believe in, something that is made up, that the creator of the heavens and earth is three or something hidden or something uh, you know, not clear and all kinds of things. Yes, people, human beings, they have the right to say that doesn't make sense. But when the concept of religion in the deen of Islam, which is the truth throughout all of the messengers of Allah, that your Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth, worship him alone and do not associate partners with him. This is the truth that those who deny this after it's been presented to them, they are denying the truth and they see that in their own selves. It's not something about they're not convinced because it's by necessity has to be there in their hearts. But they turn away because of the stubbornness. And we see that clearly in our life. A person would know the truth, 
but he turned away from it because it's not the way of his parents, for example, or because of his tribe, or because of his people, or the color of his skin, or whatever there is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. That's the qadr of Allah that he decreed for the believers and for the disbelievers. The believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would fulfill his promise to them, the gardens underneath which the rivers flow, and for the disbelievers, the punishment in the hellfire because of what they used to do, and that's in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the matter very clear to them. Then the next verse talks about the signs of Allah on earth, again, establishing the evidences of the tawheed, since the punishment is as we heard. So the human beings are not left like this with just one uh, verse here or there. It's establishing the evidences. There's no doubt whatsoever when a person read all of these different verses. So verse number five talks about the signs of Allah that should lead the person to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and to worship Him alone. Verse number five, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هو الذي جعل الشمس ضياء والقمر نورا وقدره منازل لتعلموا عدد السنين والحساب ما خلق الله ذلك إلا بالحق يفصل الآيات لقوم يعلمون which means and it is he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who made the sun a shining light and the moon a derived light and determined for its phases that you may know the number of years and account of time. Allah has not created this except in truth. He details the signs for a people who know. This is where we get to know who benefit from the signs of Allah. The first part of the verse, something that all human beings, they see with their own eyes. But the verse starts with huwa. It is He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one that made الشمس, الشمس, the sun, ضياء, a shining light, والقمر, and the moon, نورا, light, right? You see it in translation, derived light, because that's what the moon gets its light from the sun, but we don't, we don't need it actually to say derived light, because the two words, ضياء and نور, there's differences in both of them. The ضياء, which is more light in it, of course, very obvious, and it has that sense of heat in it, and it's something that comes from its own self by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So shams is definitely the sun. The light of the sun is very clearly different than the light of the moon. The light of the moon is derived from the sun. So definitely it's not the same. So and also the, the nur or the light that is associated with the, with the moon is in the darknesses of the night. So it's light in the darknesses of the night. And the sun, it's duya, it's shining light and that's what makes the daylight. So who's the one that made the sun and the moon? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how many people they reflect upon the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a daily basis? Whether it's night time now or day time or you know, maghrib time or fajr time, do we reflect upon these signs of Allah? When we look at the sun and the moon, it's amazing creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The two as human beings, we see ourselves are so weak that if it come closer to the earth, we'll all be burned out and, and, and all, everybody shall die. And if it goes further away, you know, uh, how the consequences of everybody will freeze. Everything is by the measure, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with specific measure. And that's all by the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the power of Allah. So how specific the verses are talking about what the sun versus the moon. وَقَدَّرَهُ مَنَازِلًا made it in such a way that for people to get to know the time, to get to know the years and to get to know the how to account for time and things like this. You know, imagine that it was something different. People do not know what night and what day and what, you know, they, they set their affairs in this life based on the movement of the sun and the moon and things like this. And how even the acts of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to the, to the moon and the months of Ramadan and Hajj and so on. And uh, how things are clearly when it comes to uh, being very specific and being able to establish certain things on the face of earth and even transactions and contracts and so on. It's all by the power of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the ability to do uh, such things by the creation of Allah. And it's all from Allah. Uh, and He's the one that taught mankind to count and to be able to figure out all of these types of very complicated uh, life and very complicated things that people, sophisticated ways of life that human beings they live in. And all of that is by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them. That's why the verse starts with huwa alladhi. It is he the one that made the sun in such a way and the moon and so on. Ma khalaqa Allahu dhalika illa bilhaq. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create all of this except by the truth. Meaning that He's the one that created it. So it's not did not create itself. This is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's created for the truth. Created for a reason. It's not created for nothing. It's created for something. What is that something? This is where the knowledge comes in place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the signs detailed. He details the signs for a people who know, for the people of knowledge, for people to get to know the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the ayat of Allah, the signs of Allah are mentioned in details. Do we need to be reminded? Yes, because we tend to forget. But we see these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a daily basis. And it's something that should bring from the hearts of the believers that they would say, Subhanallah, glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi la ayati lul albab. Wa akhtilafi layli wal nahar la ayati lul albab. That in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the change of the day and the night, signs for the people of reason, the people of intellect, that would lead them to what? الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم Those who would remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala standing, laying down uh, on their side, sitting. And they would say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would say, they would, they would clearly state this with their own statement. رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِينَ عَذَابَ النَّارِ Our Lord, you did not create this بَاطِلًا in falsehood. You created it by the truth and for the truth. سُبْحَانَكَ Glory be to you, فَقِينَ عَذَابَ النَّارِ So shield us from the punishment of the hellfire. This is what the verse is referring to. مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ A human being seeing the creation of Allah and reflecting upon this, would he think that then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this for, for falsehood, for just for nothing, or it's created for the truth? يُفَصِّلُ الْآتِ لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make these details for the people of knowledge, for those who know, and that shows the, the virtue of knowledge. And what is the benefiting knowledge? The benefiting knowledge is the knowledge that would make the person seize the truth. But if the knowledge takes the person away from seeing the truth and becomes more forgetful, right? that means this is ignorance and it's not knowledge. Because knowledge is what makes the person have the fear of Allah. What makes the person humble themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and refer everything to the one that initiated it, the one that created it. So, لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ To the people, those who know the significance of that. This is what the people, those who learn and benefit and perceive right, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the next verse also talks about some of the signs of Allah. Verse number 6, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ فِي اخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَمَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَّقُونَ which means indeed in the alternation of the night and the day and in what Allah has created in the heavens and the earth are signs for a people who fear Allah. إِنَّ فِي اخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ Indeed, no doubt. فِي اخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ اختلاف means the, the alternation, the differences. And اختلاف is differences. And here the differences between the night and the day. Differences in them, the night is different than the day. The night is dark and the day is light, right? And the hours is, are different. And the weather is different in many cases. And also the alternation, that the night comes after the day and the day comes after the night and it keeps on going this way. And this is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned a lot in the Quran. And it shows how the human beings, when they do not reflect upon these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how ignorant they are. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made even the acts of worship according to the differences or the alternation of the night and the day. There are acts of worship that are to be done at night and it's not permissible to do it during the day and vice versa. Salatul Isha is to be done at night time after the disappearance of the, red, the redness in the horizon. That's the beginning of the time of Isha. If someone decided to pray Isha time at the time of Dhuhr, it's not going to be accepted. If a person is willingly like this, making a decision for his own self, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that created the day and the night, He's the one that ordered His slaves, the believers, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever specific times that He ordered them to do. He's the creator of all things. And when we look into the religion of Allah from that perspective, we would interact with the signs of Allah in the proper way. 
So when the night time comes, and we see that, for example, in the month of Ramadan, that everybody's hungry, everybody's thirsty, and what makes them you know, not eat and drink is they're waiting for the sun to set. They are basically looking into the signs of Allah. They're interacting with the creation of Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear to them that you won't break your fast, and you're, if you break your fast in a sinful way, that's a different situation, but you wait till the sun sets. So a sun, you're witnessing it with your heart seeing the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Same thing with the different acts of worship. If we talk about that you know, subject alone, it's the entire life of the human beings, how perfect is the religion of Islam, the rulings of Allah, and how it's linked with the physical creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll continue with that inshallah ta'ala and the lessons learned after the break, so stay with us inshallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah Muhammadur Rasulullah Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah Welcome back and with verses number 4 to number 6 from Surah Yunus and the signs of Allah, it's always a beautiful subject The best subject is when we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are more than one way to do so. One of which is to talk about the creation of Allah. Because when we talk about the creation of Allah, we witness in the creation of Allah the power of Allah, the wisdom of Allah, the perfect rulings of Allah in the deen of Islam. And as we heard how the alternation of the day and the night affects our actions, physical actions, the norm is that people rest at night and they work during the day. Things to be done during the day that you cannot do it during the night. Even in the creation of Allah, some creation they only come out during the night and they sleep during the day and vice versa. And the body how it reacts to both. And with physical uh, rulings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us with the five daily prayers for example. And how they are spread out throughout the day and the night in the most perfect way. And for people to be tested according to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, the fasting, matters of transactions even and relationships and all kinds of things affected by the alternation of the day and the night something that we should not be heedless and should be always be in that state of remembrance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ikhtilaf al-layl wa nahar wa ma khalaq Allah fi al-samawati wal ard and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in the heavens and the earth and that by itself is you know endless creation of Allah you know who can really comprehend all of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the face of earth. Something that is, you know, we should always reflect upon this. He's the creator of all things. All of that are لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَّقُونَ They are ayat, signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For everybody to benefit from it, they should, yes. But those who would benefit from it are the people of taqwa. لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَّقُونَ is only signs for the people of taqwa, those who fear Allah, those who are dutiful to Allah, those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do righteous good deeds and the muttaqeen are mentioned in the Quran in many verses and they are the ones that benefit from the signs of Allah. So as you see that the signs of Allah even though everybody sees it but not everybody benefit from it. How to benefit from the signs of Allah? As the previous verse mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes them the, the signs uh, in details for people to have the knowledge of it. And what's the benefit of that knowledge? It's for people to fear Allah, for people to be dutiful to Allah. If they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will benefit from these signs. And that's explained to us why some people, they don't benefit from these signs because they're not people of taqwa. They don't fear Allah. They don't fear the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And if they would look into these signs with details, with their hearts, they would fear Allah. And they would be dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a clear evidence that the people of taqwa, the people, those who fear Allah, those who are dutiful to Allah, these are the signs that benefits us, benefit them. And that's why if, we, if a person sees himself that he's not benefiting from these signs, that means he should question his taqwa of Allah, his fear of Allah. And therefore we should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be upon taqwa and to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to reflect upon these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you see these verses is establishing the belief in Allah and in the signs of Allah and to witness the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all matters on the face of earth 
and the belief in the hereafter. As you see, like very simple, you know, uh, words, but it's, it established the entire religion of Islam in the hearts of the believers. Established the belief in the hereafter. The belief in the hereafter is not something to be remembered once in a while. It's something that should not depart from our perception and our hearts at all times. Because in anything that we say and we do, if we don't have the clear vision of what's coming ahead and the hereafter, these deeds are not going to benefit us. It might be actually to be the total opposite. Because the most precious thing in this life is time itself. Our lifespan is the most precious thing. Why? Because according to what we do on the face of earth, we would receive the rewards and remember Qadam al as it's mentioned in the beginning of the surah or the opposite وَالْعَيَذُ billah. So this life is such a precious one. As Muslims we believe that this life is such a precious one to do what? To fulfill the purpose of our life on it. And therefore to not to waste anything in this life to constantly think in the hereafter, about the hereafter. So the word that I'm going to say now is it going to benefit me in the hereafter? Or it's going to be harmful for me in the hereafter? Halal and haram. What's permissible, what's not permissible. And even levels of goodness. If it's not going to benefit but it's not haram, why waste our time? Just do what is benefiting. With knowledge, a person would be able to do all things with ilm, with knowledge, that would make the person always productive on the face of earth. Because when people say, but does that mean that we should not eat and drink and and get married and go to work and so on. This is lack of knowledge if a person asks this. Because all of what we do on the face of earth, eating and drinking and doing the physical matters and enjoying things in the halal way, all of that, if it's done with that concept, never depart from our hearts, that we're doing this so that we fulfill the worship of Allah. And one of which is the five daily prayers. And it's so, it shows how the religion of Islam is so easy and simple. And if you remember the statement of one of the tabi'een, uh, Sayyid al-Musayyib rahimahullah that when he said uh, whoever prays the five daily prayers in jama'ah man salla as-salawat al-khams fi jama'ah faqad mala al-barra wal-bahra ibadah whoever prays the five daily salat in congregation as the Prophet sallallahu used to do it he had filled the earth and the sea with ibadah with the worship of Allah why? because if you do so that means your work is going to be for a reason for you to be able to worship Allah. Your relationships will be for a reason for you to worship Allah. Uh, your contracts, your cars, your house, whatever that is, it's going to be for a purpose. And that is to establish the worship of Allah. And of course comes with this to be among the people of taqwa. Those who fear Allah. Those who stay away from the, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade. Then their life becomes such a precious one. And they would be among those who receive the great rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is all from ilayhi marji'ukum jami'a. To him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of you shall return. You should, the, what is the last verse that was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu It was said to be in Surah Al-Baqarah, if you remember. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ Fear a day, shield yourself from a, a day that you shall return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ that all of you shall return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore fear Allah. Some people they make the religion as just something to give you some joy or some form of a, uh, you know, relaxing feelings. The religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings this, yes. But the religion of Allah is to be among the people of taqwa. We need to shield ourselves from the punishment of Allah in the hereafter. And we should seek also the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. Because the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. And He's the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the orders of Allah are not something difficult. It's something that fits our ability as human beings. We need to seek help from Allah. That's why we say, Ya can wa Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one to be worshipped and He's the only one that we seek help from. And when we read the verses, when everything from Allah, when everything is by Allah, that means also your guidance, your heart to be guided, your steadfastness, your ability to do good deeds. So the most important and effective means for us to be upon the deen of Allah is to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the owner of these hearts. So if someone would ask, I want to be righteous, but things are difficult and there are so many temptations and all of this, the first thing and the most important thing is, is to turn sincerely to Allah and seek help from Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the truth. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to be upon the truth, to know the truth and to be upon the truth. And that's why, as we heard in the two verses, لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ and also لِقَوْمِ يَتَّقُونَ To know is one thing and to act is another thing. And we need both. We need the knowledge and actions. We need the knowledge of what is right. We need to have the fear of Allah to be upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, which is all based on the knowledge of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We learned that the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. So therefore we have to act according to this. What is in the Quran mentioned about the truth or the promise of Allah? Stories of the prophets mention this. How the prophets of Allah, they were patient. The followers of the prophets, how they were patient, facing oppression, facing torture, facing all kinds of things. Because the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promise the believers as it's mentioned here in the many verses in the Quran? Uh, how, promises in this life and in the hereafter. All of that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that we learn from the verses how to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes and the effect of that in our hearts. So that we, we need to belittle, not in a negative sense, but the creation of Allah, we need to put it in its perspective. This is creation of Allah. They cannot do anything to you or for you. If all of the entire nations, they come together to try to harm you, they're not going to be able to do so unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permit for it to happen. That's not my statement. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said to Abdullah ibn Abbas when he was young. Young, not you know, 30 years old. Something that the Prophet ﷺ when he died, Abdullah ibn Abbas was on the verge of puberty. And he gave him these powerful statements. And so on. And this beautiful hadith that you probably heard and we need to repeat it all the time. But in it, that have the knowledge, have the ilm that would affect your heart. And the ummah, if the entire nation, everybody, they get together that they would benefit you with anything they won't benefit you with anything unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained it for you they believe in the qadr of Allah and the same thing for the opposite if all of the nations, all of the human beings they get together to harm you with anything they won't be able to harm you with anything unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordained it for you رُفِعَةِ الْأَقْلَامِ وَجَفَّةِ الصُّحْفِ the pen uh, the pens that write the destiny has been lifted and the tablets that the qadr of Allah, the de destiny of Allah, the decree has been written in it is dried up, dried out. That means it's not going, and it, nothing is going to be added in it. So why fear other than Allah? Why fear the human beings when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to fear him? Why uh, should a person obey the, the human beings and the disobedience of Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one to be obeyed and that's the benefit of what we read that everything is by Allah and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the believers versus the disbelievers brings the hope for the rewards from Allah and brings the fear of Allah when it talks about the disbelievers in details of the punishment that they would receive because of their disbelief Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just and not to question the justice of Allah then the signs of Allah and how it's a call for people to look into these signs that the deen of Allah, there's no contradiction. Uh, why? Because everything is from Allah. Other false religions, they have problems with science. They, throughout history, and some of the, their scientists have been executed. Why? Because it goes against the false teachings of false religions. But if the religion is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it goes hand in hand with the truth, with the science that is truth, not just theories that has no basis to it, but the, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth, so the religion of Islam is in harmony with ilm, with knowledge, if it's the true knowledge. That's why the verses of the Quran talks about these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising the people of knowledge. Of course, the knowledge refers to the knowledge of the sharia, of the deen of Islam, the deen of Islam. Also, these signs will be able to see it and to benefit from it. And that's why we, we redefine things. So if someone, he got the highest level of education and in, in the sun and the moon and you know all kinds of sciences and so on but it doesn't lead them to the truth that's not really knowledge that's something that is you know ignorance because the real knowledge is that would make the person fear Allah and be dutiful to Allah and therefore to humble oneself to the truth and to the deen of Allah and to the way of the Prophet and we see also that how that the alternation between the day and the night and how that the ibadah during the night should be done during the night some people, they miss Fajr prayer when it's summertime because the night is short and the day is long. Because they work at 
9 o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock in the morning and Fajr time is at 3 o'clock in the morning. But in the winter time, when the Fajr is at 6 o'clock in the morning, they wake up for Fajr, no problem. We are slaves of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to be obedient to Him and observe the fact that there is night and days and this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed the matter for us. So we need to be patient and seek rewards from Allah and struggle with our own selves and our own desires to fulfill the orders of Allah according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for us. That's how the signs of Allah with the knowledge and the fear of Allah goes together and that's how we benefit. The believers are the only ones that benefit from the signs of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and by looking at the signs of Allah which is the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us benefit from what we heard and from the words of Allah, the Quran and to make the Quran the spring of our hearts and the light of our chests and, and to make us steadfast and guided upon the truth. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إلا الذين تابوا وأصلحوا وبينوا فأولئك أتوب عليهم وأنا التواب الرحيم فادعوا الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون يا زكريا Shahidah